his pictures show us clearly that he was not only an experimenter in composition and interpretation but also that he had to struggle hard to free himself from the streams of conventional thinking and status quo and look to apply that tug of the inward voice and lay it down to paint as harmonious and natural as a flowing stream there is pure poetry and freedom in the work of Metcalf, in technique in honesty in observation synthesizing all to its essence the beauty that nature provides so freely must be refined in the eye of the painter to gain an essence of the thing seen and wholly satisfying in its completeness willard metcalf was born in lowell massachusetts in 1858 in the historic city located on the merrimack river in middlesex county about 30 miles north of boston incorporated in the 19th century lowell was a mill town named after businessman francis cabot lowell inventor of a manufacturing system known as the lowell system willard metcalf's work portrays the most characteristic aspects of the eastern states in terms of a thoroughly american temperament perhaps nowhere else do the seasons put their imprint on the landscape with such incisiveness as in new england and it is this section to which metcalf almost exclusively confines himself his pictures of early spring are not impressions of spring in general but of a particular new england locality they have the shy joy of a reserved nature returning to gladness after a long season of chilling repression which characterizes nature and human activity in new england his interpretation of spring may be likened to an allegro movement played on a clear tone spinet autumn at the crescendo when new england trees quiver in tongues of flame against a pellucid blue sky when the land of puritan descent throws off its cloak of reticence and glows in febrile intensity he is one of the happiest interpreters of the unrivaled october days which are the peculiar glory of our climate when new england snows cool the fires of autumn his work is equally inspired he gives us the mood of snow-filled air and the frosty feeling of winter among lonely hills and trees and gives us the first disintegrating breath of spring on deep new england snows his work calls up tender associations that an american can best appreciate metcalf has a delicate touch and heartfelt association with the land it's obvious that he connects with what he sees and how he wants to render it in close inspection his technique while very honest does not give away how he actually reveals it a master of the touch with the brush when seen in an exhibition his work absolutely shines as nature breathing from the canvas he began his training at the museum of fine arts in boston and would eventually make his way to france from boston he was eventually to strike out on his own to illustrate a series of stories about the zuni indians in new mexico and arizona for harper's magazine and century magazine in 1883 at 27 years old from 1883 through to the next six years metcalf lived in france where he studied at academy julian under gustave boulanger and jules joseph lefebvre and it might be added to two of the finest instructors at julian's venturing through Brittany and normandy he worked at sketching and painting near the villages of pont aven and grez sous loing and within a few years frequenting giverny with several american colleagues including a brief visit to north africa during the winter of 87 metcalf would receive an honorable mention at the all-important paris salon the following year upon returning to the united states metcalf settled in new york city continuing to do illustration work and for a short time as an instructor at the art students league his early exposure to the plein air movement in france he began experimenting with impressionist fragmented brushwork which was increasingly more popular among artists of the day and it was there in that style of working that he would find his voice not uncommon is the willingness and often the necessity of artists to band together for a common cause or philosophy the ten american painters is just such a group having left the society of american artists due to differences in direction and or newly appointed directors founding members of the ten were frank benson joseph de camp thomas dewing child hassam willard leroy metcalf robert reed edward simmons edmund tarbell john henry twachtman and j alden weir all were former members of the society of american artists 
Winslow Homer declined an invitation to join. While Metcalf decidedly was at home with landscape, he was also a capable figure painter. Illustration work often requires careful design skills that fit the demands of the editor, so it can be a much relieved release to work in nature where the artist can roam, look around, and settle on some aspect of flora and fauna that speaks to him. The careful balance that the artistic mind must work at in order to satisfy a steady production, hopefully rewarding commercially, while at the same time placate the more satisfying needs of the painter to simply paint anything. His landscape painting found its mark both technically and in subject matter. The all-American feel he was familiar with and strove to convey in paint are truly successful in every respect. It is the mood he sets as well as well-balanced design essentials and arrangements that set his work apart. The Boston painters, in particular the Ten, were big on simplicity, in method, and in the big look, as was the common terminology of the day. Metcalf can satisfy close-up scrutiny of the various aspects of his painting, with the brushwork faithfully and simply embracing the thing seen, a solitary tree, a moving stream, or a snowbank of bellowing heaps, capturing all with unencumbered detail in its simplest form, not too complicated technically or intrusive to the eye. Metcalf frequently used the square format arrangement for his choice of composing landscapes, which also seems to be his trademark. It is pleasing in that it embraces the whole very succinctly. The zigzag design in several of his compositions permits the suggested action in the painting, while sustaining the rest and calm of nature. One can easily feel the windiness, birds chatting and a fragrance filling the air with a glow bathed in light. His paintings will also utilize the motif of a winding stream or brook, not unlike the artist Dennis Bunker, whose brilliant fields and streams were masterpieces of picture-making, but with a somewhat more fluid brush. By 1904, it appears that Metcalf retreated from the city and went to stay with family in Clark's Cove, Maine, which added to a highly productive period and a turning point in the artist's career. He seemed to develop a greater understanding of the way he wished to paint the lush New England landscapes, Metcalf's painting successfully seized the beauty and serenity of every season and under wide-ranging climatic conditions. By his 46th year, Metcalf once more had a studio in New York City as a home base from which he travelled to other locations in New England. We find him at Old Lyme, Connecticut, with its thriving artist's colony, where painters gathered at the boarding house of Miss Florence Griswold, and he ventured to the hills of Cornish, New Hampshire, for the wonderful hill country of the state. Metcalf contributed to the Panama Pacific Exposition in 1915, but by this time he was beleaguered by poor health, strong drink, and personal difficulties toward the end of his life. Metcalf passed away on the 8th of March 1925 in New York City. His legacy is firmly in place with the brilliant style and confident brushwork that is the hallmark of great painting. His compositions are always a standout being very original, particularly in capturing the mood and delicacy of the landscape. He was a poet in landscape painting, and future artists will glean a great deal from the distinctive qualities of the work of Willard Metcalf. We hope you enjoyed this look at Metcalf's work and our presentation. We also hope more of his work will be discovered and shown, so thank you to our subscribers, and remember to add a like, as it helps the channel a lot. With that and until next time, it's bye for now.